So welcome everyone to tonight's virtual program with the American Visionary Art Museum in Baltimore, Maryland. Thank you for logging on. Tonight we are so excited to have artist Dean Million joining us from New York City. Say Hi. hello, Dean. Hey, how are you? <laughs> Woohoo. Hello. Um, like I said, Dean is Zooming with us. He is at Summertime Gallery in New York, and we want to give them a huge shout out and thank you. Thank you so much to Anna and Sophia um, for providing us with the images that we're using tonight and for the space for um, our Zoom tonight. Uh, Summertime is a gallery, studio, and residency program for artists, so we do have a link to them at the end of the program, so we hope you'll check them out. Um, at the end of our program, we will have time for questions. So if you want to just drop those in the chat, you can do that anytime during the program and we'll hopefully be able to get them all answered. So here's a picture of the American Visionary Art Museum if you've never been there before. And we're just going to take a peek at what we have inside. So um, artist Dean Million is featured in AVAM's current mega exhibition, Abundance, Too Much, Too Little, Just Right, which explores what lies at the heart of deep satisfaction, productive happiness, and gratefulness, both individual and collective. Nowhere is the quest for personal freedom in the expression of work, nor the pursuit of joy more evident than in the creation of artists who have wrought new worlds from modest, often discarded materials, equipped only with their hands, hearts, and imagination. And Dean is certainly using his hand and his heart to create his artwork and also using aluminum foil. Um, Dean, can you tell us about the gorilla that we currently have in abundance? How big is he? This gorilla right here is well, it's life size pretty much. Yeah. And uh, I would say 10 feet. Give us take a few centimeters down. Like inches. Yeah. How long did it take you to make this gorilla? Um, it, I started a few hours and then to just to perfect it, I would say like a week. Wow. Yeah, a week, I would say. Yeah. That's great. Um, let's go to this next image that I love. And this is another one of your large sculptures. Who is this? What is this? Um, this is a, a crocodile I made um, for my opening show in Williamsburg in summertime. Yeah, gallery. So I made this one. And this took me about like 30, 34, uh, 48 hours to make. Yeah, I, w I went to a museum, a natural history museum, museum of natural history, sorry. Mm -hmm. And I was inspired by two pictures, uh, two uh, sculptures or two uh, stuffed crocodiles, I think. Oh, one was an alligator, one was a crocodile. So I took pictures of them and I was thinking it'll be nice to make one. So I picked a crocodile, so. Wow, it looks yeah, really big cool. if you can put your whole head in it. That's huge. Yeah. Oh, here's some other um, photos of the crocodile, super lifelike. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's actually bigger than the one I saw. Oh, it was video. bigger than the one you saw in person? Wow. Yeah. These are the ladies of Summertime Gallery. I just wanted to give them another shout out. Thank yes. you so again. So Dean, now we want to hear a little bit about um, what in what your inspiration is for your artwork. So we'll just show some images and you can talk about what inspires you. Yes. Uh, Pink Panther always was the inspiration to me as a child. I used to always make uh, like drawings of, of him and watch the cartoons. And then later I learned to sculpt them out of foil. Oh, cool. And also the Smurfs. Yeah. I would say the Smurfs was first, but then later the Pink Panther. Yeah. <laughs> what else we got? <laughs> Abbott and Costello. Yeah. Always a part of like, 
the sculpting process because I used, I like the hat that Costello used to wear. So mm -hmm. I learned to make that a lot, you know. Yeah, it's a perfect oh. hat. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and Stymie is another inspiration because of the hat. Yeah. Popeye, I like to make Popeye. A lot. I was a big fan of Popeye. So I used to just always watch the cartoons, especially the the classic ones, you know. So I learned to make him my inspiration. Tom and Jerry is one of my all-time favorites. Mm -hmm. Also Mickey Mouse. Yes. <laughs> See a couple of Mickey Mouse's I made in the oh. past. Uh, so basically, uh, this is an inspiration also because I used to own a lot of toys, you know, and one of them was a Batmobile. Then they are uh, they were gone Since from my childhood. They got taken away, and I had to remember them just by watching TV, you know, dreaming about them and. That's how I learned to make them on my own. Um, oh, so these were some toys like you had when you were younger. Yeah, those were the yeah, similar toys. Yes. And then what happened after, you know, the toys disappeared? Then what? What did you do? Uh, I used this. Uh, I remember I had nothing, uh, so uh, I wasn't. <laughs> That at that time I was in um I didn't know how to do anything. I just all I did was own toys and play with them. So when they got thrown away, uh I just I guess I was just looking for something. I was just inspired to uh to play again, you know. So I learned to make some with a sponge. I used a sponge and then I shaped it into like a cat. And oh, nice. then after that, I lost the sponge. <laughs> so I use foil. That's mm -hmm. where it comes in. So did you just get foil out of the kitchen drawer? Because that was uh, uh, yeah, uh, out of the kitchen, um, the yeah. the cabinet. I used to always steal some pieces all the time, and I end up using the whole roll. Oh. Yeah. So then now we'll just chat a little bit about your process because you've been using foil ever since um, yes. to create your sculptures, right? Yes. Why did you, um, so you said you started with a sponge and then you found foil and what felt good about that to you? Why do you like working with foil? Um, it, it was easier to find a lot of places and it was, it was, it, it worked. It kind of like was like, uh, my blade, you know, like if I was a samurai, it would be the blade, you know, yeah, to go. Yeah, it was just so accessible everywhere, you know, yeah, and it worked. I could shape it into anything, you know, anything. So, foil is it worked, it's stuck with me for years, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, do you use any other tools when you're creating your sculpture? Yeah, I use tools. Like uh, nowadays, like if I'm working, I use dental tools. That helps a lot. Yeah, I find that really uh, relaxing to use, you know? Yeah. Yeah, instead of my hands all the time. I use my hands in the tools. And I use hammers, mallets, you name it. Wow. Anything that wires, wires, oh, yeah. wires and pliers. <laughs> um, do you ever like reuse discarded pieces of foil, or um, you know, use foil from old sculptures to make new sculptures? I have, yes, I've used a lot of used pieces of foil. Yeah, I never like throwing them away. Because throwing them away would remind me of when my dad threw away all my toys, you know. I can throw them away if I choose, but I, it's easy to use them, so I don't throw them away. So you would just take a sculpture and just, you know, 
just flatten it out and then save the foil for the next one? Yeah, like if it's all, if it's, uh, I would recycle it and I could uh, put it inside new foil. There's so many ways to save it, you know, instead of discarding it. I don't see a reason why I should discard it. Yeah, I never uh, thought that it should be in the garbage. Yeah. Yeah. No, we all need to learn from that. We all need to be reusing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, here's, these are some images from the you at the Natural History Museum. Yes. That's, um, and yeah. Cool. I took some pictures, some screenshots of gorillas that I liked. Yeah. And yeah, they remind me a lot of gorillas that I used to make. You know, and that one actually looks like King Kong, the one that I've been taking a picture of. Yeah, it's really inspiring to look at. Yeah, he's got like a powerful look going on. Yeah, like that look. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's that's actually what I was talking about earlier while taking pictures of the uh, crocodile and the alligator, there's one that's uh, one side of, across from me is a crocodile and behind me is a alligator. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the show at Baltimore at the AV and M. Mm -hmm. Yeah, AVAM, yeah. That was fun. It's a good night. <laughs> yeah, we were so excited to have you at the opening so you could see yes. your installation. Thank you. That's when I met you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you met a lot of great. our volunteers and members. That was a really fun. Yes. It was really great. Yes. So I like looking at this picture because it shows, you know, we have some smaller sculptures and that you know, the big gorilla and the big elephant, and then these like flat, the flat pigs. Do you want to talk about those? Uh, yeah, the flat pigs, uh, those are new. Those are, um, I, I, don't, I, I don't remember making anything flat before. I always, uh, everything's always three-dimensional. So uh, those were like, when I was wor working at the summertime gallery for my show, I, came up with an idea to do it and, it and it worked out really well. So I, yeah, I think I imagined it uh, as a sign. So I made it basically happen, cool. which is good. Yeah, um, we Those had new additions. Yeah, I like them. Um, there's a question from the audience. Um, how much does like the elephant head weigh and the gorilla? Like, are they heavy? Are they light or medium? What do you think? They're all foil. So the gorilla, I would say it's a, uh, hmm, it's a good point, uh, point. I would say like, I lift many weights, including my own weight. So I'm trying to guess the weight. It'll, let's see, uh, 80 pounds or less. That gorilla, uh, uh, I would say definitely is 80 pounds, I would say. Wow. And another question, do you build an armature inside to hold the foil or what do you put inside of the sculptures? Um, the, the everything, everything you see is solid foil. Yeah, but I, I, I do, I, I do use armature, you know, at some time, depending what it is in the situations. I found the ways to use um, foil for everything. It's, it's always possible to build foil around everything. That's an armature, like this table that I'm sitting, you know, that I'm in front of. The chair is an armature. That that's what I would do with all stuff like recycling material. Use mm -hmm. that as armature. That's mm -hmm. yeah. Of course, but with these that you see it, no, they don't have armature in it. It's all foil. Cause that's all, that's that's how I learned to make it in the beginning. When I started, it was small and it was all solid. So I figured I would have to make them solid as they get bigger, but. Oh, 
that oh, makes okay. sense. Yeah. So now we're going to show some more of your work um, and they're grouped by size. So we can start from small. <laughs> <laughs> Who's this? <laughs> uh, this is just a just little house mouse, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So this is, I, I, I don't have names for all of them, but um, yeah. I don't know. I guess I could give them names, you know? <laughs> You don't have to name them. He's just so, so it's like really small, like it would fit on your finger. It's about like, uh, yeah, uh, the size of my uh, uh, pinky. Got it. Yeah. yeah. Who else we got? Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's uh, the size. Yes, that's my finger. Small. So those are like, so the one that you see in the mouse is considered tiny. Mm -hmm. That's tiny because that's like on my pinky. So that's on my finger. I would say that's, yeah, it's tiny, small. Tiny. And then, okay, so, so next we have small. Let's see what we got. Oh. Yeah, that's a, that would be considered small. Yeah. Anything that's on my hand is small. And this is a pig wearing a hat? Yeah, so a sombrero. <laughs> sombrero. Yeah. Yes. I love it. Um, we have a question in the chat. How did you decide to start using dental tools? Like, how did you get started with those? Uh, they were given to me, and um, and I thought they were great. They were recommended. Um, uh, they asked me what kind of tools do I use. Tools, I said I use like um, like different tools, like from toothpicks or like uh, chopsticks, stuff like that, and anything metal that works. So somebody uh, gave me as a gift dental tools. Oh. So dental tools was a great idea. It worked really well. Yeah. Even even sculpting clay uh, tools for that. Yes. Oh, yeah. so clay tools work well too. Yeah. I like that. Yes. Oh. Yeah, that's a turtle, and that's a that's small. Got it. Yeah, it's a small piece. I love the texture of the shell. Um, mm, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I put design. I use the tools to put designs on them. You know, put in prints on them. I make up my own. You know, so it's fun. It's nice to do that. It's relaxing. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah that's um body of minds yeah oh is this yeah. um jonah is that who's in this picture jonah yes yes jonah and I, said door. I was like oh. <laughs> did you want to talk anything. talk about your um animal readings that you like to do sometimes oh yeah uh I was uh, picturing people as animals sometimes too. I was like, we're we are animals, you know. I was this is during work. Mm -hmm. And I, I was like, people are like animals, you know. Sometimes you got a little free time to think, you know, and it's true as it's people have like animalistic qualities, uh, you know, animal behaviors, you know. There there's so much like animals, I think. And I found it like interesting to create animals out of people my thoughts and I and I realized yeah I could create animals out of people you know so well, people just put off like a certain animal vibe for you yeah they, they yeah a lot of people you could see even if you're walking if you stop you want to look and you you could see that there, there are people that resemble animals in certain ways, you know? Yeah, yeah, all different types. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and it's good. I think it's a, it's, a, it's, it's a right vibe, the right feeling. I think it makes sense. Yeah, it's funny, but it's actually, it's right. Um, another question came in from the chat. Um, what is it about animals that inspires you? Um, 
well, they're sometimes you feel like they can talk sometimes, you know, like when you when you close to them or when you study them by looking at them, by feeling them, they have like a kind of like a a calm or a voice inside, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's and it's like it, it talks to me, my inner being, you know. It just yeah, so you it's can weird. Connect, oh, yeah. you connect with them. What? You connect with the animals? I think so a lot. Yeah. I always did, you know, every animal, like whether it's uh, uh something under the rock or a worm or you know, something that flies, bugs, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter, anything like yeah. That's great. Um yeah. See a few questions coming in. Which animal do you identify as? Uh, there's three: a worm, uh, um, like a big one, mm-hmm. right? Um, scorpion and uh, praying mantis. Oh, My favorite. Got it. Yeah. Um, let's see. Another question: Do you have any pets? <laughs> no. Just no, uh, just foil just foil animals, right? Just foil animals and whatever I could create out of foil, yes. Mm. Yeah. Oh, what is this little one or small one? Uh that was a dinosaur. Oh I yeah, that's like a uh, I think I was made up for one of those, yeah. <laughs> that wasn't a T-Rex because a T-Rex could stand on his hind legs. Yeah, so that's, yeah. Let's see, another question. Have you ever made a foil cat? Yeah, I made foil cats many times, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's see, okay. oh, now we're on to medium. <laughs> um. Okay, so now these are about the size of, uh, about, about this size, yeah. Mm. Uh, two Two palms. Yeah. Got it. I love this monkey. Yeah, thank you. I think I love it too. That's actually one of my favorite pieces that I like to make. I enjoyed making him. I took a long time to make him. Yeah. So yeah, his head is like perfectly brown. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, that's all that was nice to make the head round. It just it's fun to do it. You can use tools, you can use desk. It's, yeah, so many ways to make it perfect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. That is, uh, the that was one of the, the, I think that was the beginning of that gorilla, but then that, that, that was a baby gorilla. So this is actually a medium piece. That's not large, that's a medium piece. Yeah, a large, would be uh, would wait be almost the size of my chest and down. Okay, I think we have, let's see. I think we have large. So we're still in medium. So here's a medium turtle. Yes, that's a medium turtle. Yes, that's actually yeah. It's about the yeah two palms in my hand, like two of my hands. Mm. Oh, yeah. That's uh the a seal. That actually I named it Lucille, the seal. Seal the seal. Yeah. Um, we have another question that came in. Um, Kathy would love to hear about your studio studio space. Um, what's important for you to have in your studio for um, art for art making? Definitely the the number one, the foil, the the space and um the tools and music yeah what kind of music do you listen to while you're creating um there's like well i i would listen to music if, like if i was at home so so to create the environment i would i, I listen to like uh it's hard to describe like ebm yeah sounds kind of disco we are cool yeah so that just gets you in like you know, the mood to make things. 
Yeah, yeah. A lot of electronic, yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. It helped me a lot. Yeah. Something about the electronics. Oh. Yeah. The trends. <laughs> yeah, these are medium pieces of it. Yes. Medium gorilla. Yeah, medium gorillas. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's a uh yes, that's actually medium too. Yeah, it's a little smaller than the one you've seen. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's eyes. Oh. Oh, his eyes. Oh, 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 his eyes is actually foil. It's colored in with Sharpie. Oh. But yeah. So it's yeah. So sometimes if you feel the need, you'll add some color in there, just like a little bit. Yeah, it's it's always it works. Like you can use Sharpie and make it give it a, a whole different look yeah it's very good it's definitely works quite a bit makes it really nice yeah or or i could use colored foil too that works too where do you get that where's it's that? everywhere you can find it anywhere like color foils in like let's say right now it's valentine's you'll find it those wrappers yes. you know flower shops you know uh, Flower shops have it, yes. Certain type of flower shops wow. in certain spots. I know. I mean, these are things I don't even notice, but you could really use that to add to your sculpture. Oh, and Hershey Kisses, that's true. They come in yeah. those crazy colors. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Hershey's, Hershey's <laughs> Kisses help. <laughs> Not the chocolate, the the, the one. <laughs> um. I'll just take this time to mention to everyone that um, Dean is coming to Baltimore to do a foil workshop with us on April 1st. No fooling. We were going to call it April foils, which is kind of funny. Um, <laughs> so so <laughs> we should start saving our um, colored foil that we can add to our projects. Nice. Yeah, that'd be great. Let's see, um, another great question. How much time do you spend making your artwork every week? And well, let's start with that one. How long, how much are you making art, do you think? Uh, when, I'm, when I have the time, I, I, I'll spend, a, uh, I'll spend hours, I could spend hours on it. There's not like, uh, if I'm not doing anything else, I have to spend a long time on it. Because with the music and all that, it just, they all work together. It's like, uh, a whole army yeah yes yeah. one day you'll probably get to see what that's like some people do you know with yeah. the music and the floor it, it just makes sense it just works yeah the tools yeah um do you make other types of art or just this is it <laughs> um i i do other type of yes i do other type of art. Uh, I use like uh, a lot of found objects, wires. Um, let's see, uh, carton, anything recyclable. I would I use? Yeah, anything like so because I never like to throw away. Oh my god, I mean, this is gonna make me sound like a pack rat, but I don't care. Like it, <laughs> I don't like to throw away. Like I always find useful use in a lot of stuff. So wires, clay. Um, wax um cloth mm. uh hmm. yeah a lot of stuff like uh, so many this is I this whole list I can't remember <laughs> That's but crazy. yes other art um and then another question when did art making become your career like how long have you been an artist um this is a nice question um all my life I've been an artist all my life when I was like watching tv it was a part of me I I knew that it was it just connected with me so that's why bringing it out it had to come out so that makes me an artist as a kid that's three years old you know I was able to do it without nobody pressuring me without nobody knowing you know that's when I was an artist till now even up until now you know yeah so all my life love that answer all right now we're going to move on 
to large. So how big is large? Uh, it's 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 about like half of my size, I would say. Yeah, large piece. It's about like if, this is a large piece, if you can see. Got it. It's, yeah, this is considered large. Yeah. And this is medium. And yeah, this is small. Yeah. Got it. Got it. So yeah, and especially when it's when I can't. Well, I could carry them, but uh, yeah, it's hard to say. That, you know, that's uh, Polly. The um, I mean Dolly. <laughs> <laughs> Dolly, don't the, 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 the lamb. Is she yeah. lamb? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what else we got. So that's considered, yeah. That's horse head, if you can see it. Yeah. Right. That's large piece. Yeah. Yeah. That's this large. one is so detailed. The It's almost like you can see like the muscles of the horse. Um, oh, yeah. I worked on it forever. It's like, it takes so many forms, you know? So. Yeah, I, I, I like it to look like it's it's in a quarter or a stone. Give it the look. I always like stuff like that. So that's what I was trying to go for. You don't have to, I can make it look, I mean, that you could look at it and say it's realistic, yes. But my, maybe the way I see it is to, so it could look like it was on a quarter. You know, yeah, I like metal looking. So. Yeah, it does look like it's on a quarter. Mm -hmm. oh boy now we're even bigger we're into giant <laughs> yeah. so uh yeah this crocodile was uh, definitely a giant for sure yes where's the, one of the biggest pieces i think i've i've ever made where's the crocodile now is he does he have a new home or he's where is uh, he? he's 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 a he's somewhere in storage i store oh, him so I could, you know, I, I want to work on him again, change his form. So. So you have a storage space for some sculptures? Yes, yeah, so I'm going to play. Uh, I used to uh, work out of the, uh, a place called the Bowery. But when they closed down, I would moved them, and put them in storage. Yeah, to save them. Yeah, I don't throw them away. No, of course not. Yeah. Would be wrong. Yeah. Okay. Some more great images from our installation at the yeah. museum. Yes. I like seeing the small gorilla next to the big gorilla and comparing them. Um, oh, yeah, that's good. The way it was put together, I like how it was done really well. Yeah. It looks like the pigs are flying, like. Yeah. It does look like they're flying. <laughs> yeah, the float is nice. Really great. Let's see what else we got here. Oh, so we also want to mention um that Dean has an Instagram you can follow. You can also follow um Summertime Gallery. And if you're interested in, you know, purchasing Dean's work, definitely contact Summertime Gallery. They can give more information about that. Um, I'm just looking at the chats. Oh, Jasmine just posted the Instagram in the chat. <laughs> um, you must have a friend on here, um, Dean. He says, if you want to store some art in my studio, let me know. <laughs> um, <Hey. Thank> you. <laughs> um, so now I just want to talk about um, what you have next to you. Let me see if I can um if we can make sure i'm gonna unshare and we'll just have dean on the screen let's see <laughs> hi so we want to talk about um your roses what do you have what do you have next to you <laughs> um these are this is actually this is a two tulips yeah oh. so i was inspired uh, to make some tulips for Valentine's Day and yeah 
Definitely. So I've been making a couple here. I have oh, some one right here. Another one. Definitely. They are yeah. so yeah. beautiful. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I was on a roll. It's just so funny to see them on the screen, but uh yeah. So I have like some more. No, they look super realistic. The um petals and everything on the top. I love them. Oh yeah? Cool. Thanks. Uh yeah. <laughs> That's really cool. And you're selling the gallery selling those, right? Yes. Cool. We'll be selling them for Valentine's. You could get some now before mm -hmm. Valentine's and there'll be more. That's okay. the best kind of rose is one that won't like, you know, disintegrate and all the petals fall off. It'll last forever. It'll last forever. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. I work with some flowers actually. You know, it's fun experience. So it teaches me how to be connected with them. You know? Yeah. Um, so Dean, did you want to show us like a foil demo or like show us how you make something? Yeah, I could show you what guys a demo. On? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was starting on the one, but this is just for, for what flower is that? That's so, I was like a lily. Oh, yeah, it's going to be a lily. Oh, a lily. Yeah, so I'll, I'll just, uh, so I, I'll take some of this size. <laughs> yeah, just simple, nothing too crazy. Okay. Um, I'll just make a, a cat, you know. Okay. Yeah, it's simple enough, you know. The flowers sometimes take a while, you know. I have to detail it. I to, it's a whole process, but let's work with this. Um, Dean, we have another question. Just yeah. um, uh, Kathy's asking, how do you price your artwork, or do you do you work together with the gallery, or you sell it yourself? Um, you, uh, with the gallery for now, uh, mm -hmm. before when I was more independent in, the, uh, at the, uh, the gallery in Bowery that closed down, I was pricing them myself. Got you it. Know. Mm -hmm. Let's see. I don't know why this is looking like a cool one. Oh, what? <laughs> this is starting to look like a crack, bro. Well, I'm, I don't know. Let's go with it. You can morph it can morph into it's like an yeah, animorph. anamorphs did you ever yeah. did you ever see those anamorphs books where like it was like a human that turned into a animal uh anamorphs yeah i don't know uh it sounds familiar i have to send I you so I, i'm pretty sure i've seen them yeah i i used to see a show called manimal or something like that those are yeah a guy used to morph into different animals and fight crime that was cool yeah. <laughs> yeah. oh look at his little arms Oh my gosh, you're so fast. <laughs> oh yeah, I have a, a a way of being fast, yeah. I don't like to be fast. I mean, I, I don't feel like I need to be fast. I just, I'm just used to doing it, you know, I kind of know what to do. That's what makes me fast, but it's better. It's much better, honestly, when I'm slow, when I take my time, it's, it's the best. Yeah. yeah, I feel like I'm an artist when I do it that way, yeah supposed to yeah. feel you know it's, it's art is it supposed to be rushed never supposed to feel like that this rush is like making might as well be balloon animals you know yeah right so i hope i'm not rushing you <laughs> i'm rushing myself i'm just doing it because you know but it's fine it works you know yeah. i work all kinds of speeds <laughs> do you ever start working on a project and then 
you know, you have to set it to the side to like think about it a little more and come back to it. Yeah. Yeah. Or or, or there's no time to finish it, you know. That's a topping, you know, but yeah, it's all about to do it. It's it's all about like and to make it right, you gotta uh just just do it. Just do it, you know. Yeah. Um, let's see another question. Do you find inspiration from other artists? Yeah, I think uh definitely like a lot of artists that inspire me. Yeah, definitely. Like, but it's good because people are doing art. You know, it's 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 it's. I could imagine how they feel when they doing it. You know. Well, do you? You've probably met other artists from being at summertime, right? That work in different mediums. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've met a lot of uh, art artists uh, that work different mediums. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's crowded over there. Oh my God. Oh, look at him. Hold him up to the camera a little bit. Ooh. It's a the fast version of a crocodile. Let's see. So funny if I could fix it on screen. Like, yeah, that was really amazing. Thanks. <laughs> Um, another question. Let's see. Are there any pieces that you're currently working on? Like, what do you have in your studio now? Um, I'm working on. Uh, I have a lot of stuff. I, a, a horse head. I'm I'm working on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, working on. Uh, there's there's so many different things in development. You know. Yeah. So. Yeah. And. I'm always coming up with good inventions too, to to create, you know. Yeah, I've I've I have a lot of at home. I have a lot of stuff that I need. I always know what to to get in order to work mm -hmm. well. You know, as an artist, it's very important. Yeah. Do you ever start by sketching any of the animals? I know you were taking pictures, but do you ever sketch or you just start by intuition? Do I sketch? Uh, I I didn't learn to sketch at first. At, at first, I was taught to sketch. Somebody said, you should, do you ever uh, draw your art? I said, no. And you said, you should try it. And I said, okay. And I did it and it was nice. You know, I so I do it now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, so, yeah, and, uh, yeah, there's so many possibilities with that, you know, yeah. so I always try to take advantage of it. See, that's the best thing about having time, you know, if I'm not doing anything else, it's being engaged in myself and the art, you know, uh, so I could teach myself more and better, to be better, to excel. In doing this, you know, because over time, you know, I've learned to do a lot of good stuff, you know, before I was able to, when I started on my own, I made them this small, you know, mm -hmm. and then as I, time went by, I learned to do it bigger, so I was good, so there's so many ways to change them and make them bigger, you know, and better fast or strong yeah let's see there was a question in the chat that i missed um they wanted you to talk more about the animals that you are like your work like talk more about that worm like what is it about you or your personality that um you know relates to the worm um I, I always thought it was funny in the beginning to to see people as animals but for me I was like I'm an animal too like you know so the uh it's it's like uh I've, I'm broken down in three different animals like uh like the worm like it's it's like from the earth the worm is it's it's like it loves the color green and it's big and it's 
it's all involved in, in, in nature, complete nature, like mud, like trees, bark, and the change of the season. So that's what the worm that I am represent, like dirt, like the dirt and uh, new beginnings and, you know, yeah. like traveling, you know, yeah. And, yeah. Like, cause I, I, I actually uh, played with worms and I looked at them and played with them when I was younger and they have so many like mysteries about them, you know, and I like I like that about them. People will probably look at worms like, oh, they get scared, but they don't know. They're like, they're not scary. They're just part of the earth in ways we just probably don't even know. Yeah, you're right. Hmm. <laughs> um, let's see, what were the other ones? Praying mantis. What about the praying, praying mantis? Yeah, I love praying mantis. They're beautiful. It's just like when I saw them, I, I thought they were, I was young, I was maybe like uh, 14 or 13. And I used to think that they were like uh, like grasshoppers. I didn't know what they were, you know? I, I, didn't, I didn't even know the name of them. And I used to have a bush, bush full of them in, in the old house. I used to live in a private house um, back in a long time ago, yeah. Uh, and then there was a bush full of them and with families, different sizes, amazing. I wish Instagram was around back then. I'll take so many pictures, <laughs> you know. It was just crazy. They would fly, they would go back there. And I was like, I love And then that's when I fell in love with them. I was just like, they're like aliens, you know? Yeah. yeah. That's what I was going to say. They're kind of mysterious. Like Very mysterious, yeah. Because they, they, they have different colors, you know. They have a... They have a, 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 a world, you know, it's just crazy. I love it. And then let's see, scorpion, that's your last one. Scorpion, yeah, it's like a survival animal. Oh. Yeah, yeah it's kind of like. It's like kind of Yeah, that's, that's like, uh, that's, that's, that's the least, that comes last. That's the animal that's like, it don't have to be, I don't have to talk about them, but I will. You know, but that's just the, the animal, the necessary animal. Yeah, that's, yeah. Scorpion, yeah. You'll probably see why the scorpions is, is, is at some point, yeah. It's it's a good thing though, it's a good thing because scorpions, yeah, they, they're inter they're part of the earth, you know? They're just like, yeah, the horoscope of scorpions, yeah. Yeah. No, that's great. Thanks for explaining all your animals. Oh yeah. What you got welcome. now? I just changed the uh, 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 the crocodile I made into a cat. Oh, I love yeah, it. Okay. See, friendly animal. <laughs> Body loves. <laughs> I love that. Make them. Yeah. So that's. That's interesting that the cat is, or sorry, the foil so durable that you can just like keep going, you know, keep using and using it over yeah. and over. Yeah, it's easy. You know, it's recyclable. It's it has so many benefits to it, you know, like yeah. it's so great. You see why I do it, you know? I do. So. Yeah, over all these years, I've learned to do so many good stuff with it. Stuff that I didn't even do yet, you know? That's yeah. Great. Um, but I will. I I I will get to it. That's what I I got to do. Yeah, they okay. could be. They you know. I'm I'm glad that a lot of people are. They love that I make this, but I uh, I have to show you what else they they are capable of becoming. Yeah, they they have a world too, you know. And I'm feel responsible as an artist to bring that to the world, you know, not keep it to myself. I know all the stuff that I've done and can do. And it's not, I feel like it's not fair to not show people. It's not about bragging and showing off. It's totally not about that. It's just like, I really, I like, I seen it was a vision in my mind. Like I, I saw a world, like everything, even functioning stuff that should be presented, you know, and it for a good purpose too. And it will happen, you know, so yeah, we start little and like, 
before yeah, you. you're such an inspiration, um, Dean. Your work and just your philosophy on being an artist um, is just really refreshing and unique. Um, so, yeah. Um, Thanks. <laughs> Appreciate that. Let's see. Yeah, and I want to inspire other people too. That's helps me too. Yeah. Um, have you done foil workshops with adults and kids? Um, yes, I, 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 I was an art consultant mm. at one point. Yeah, That's that was awesome. nice. Yeah. yeah. And I how, did with you, how did you like working with kids? Because they always have lots of ideas. Yeah, they're very curious. Yeah. And uh they 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 always they're very smart too. Um amazing. That's why I learned from them too, because you know that I feel like what I want to do is I wanna uh, how I work with them was showing them what I know, basically, showing them what they don't know, what they can learn of how valuable and precious being an artist is how each of them can do something. It don't have to be what I do. It's, it's you guys, they have something within them. They should allow themselves to tap into, you know? They don't know it, but they do and they will realize it. So that's what I showed them. And they, 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 they understand, believe me, they, they get it. Yeah, you're right. Um, let's see if anyone has any other burning questions put them in the chat um let's see ellie has a question um where else are your is your artwork displayed right now um, well i don't have a uh, for now summertime is is the only place for now uh but there'll be other places there's they're always popping up places Wow. Every now and then. So they'll show up different places again for sure. Yeah. And then you'll know it'll be posted on my Instagram. And um summertime will will know about it. Everybody who I know will post it around. I won't be hard to find. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then what is the most challenging um piece of artwork that you've ever created? uh like i've used um i i i've i've done dangerous stuff maybe like mm -hmm. like like electricity and crazy stuff i like to i like to just go crazy with my stuff if i'm doing it for myself but mm -hmm. you know um I'll I'll say like certain paints. I would just say paints and oh, you know, okay. yeah. Well, was there any um was there a foil sculpture that you wanted to create that was just harder than you thought it would it was gonna be? Um yeah, I worked with a a, a, met, a, a more of a, a a metallic piece, like a stronger form of uh, aluminum. Oh. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And that, that was, was that was challenging to work with, but it was it was fun too because it that's that's an armature in itself, you know. Yeah, that could become an armature. I don't have to use any other piece, you yeah. know. Yeah. But it was was it just harder to bend and all that stuff? Yeah, it was really hard to bend. It's um, it, like if you wave it in the wind, it makes that like that lightning noise like that. Like that. Oh Storm yeah. It. Yeah, that's how you know it's yeah, you can't touch it. It's it's it, it'll cut you. It'll literally cut you. Yeah. That's that was a, yeah, that was a thought I had was if you ever got like cut by the foil, but foil isn't as sharp as that aluminum. I got cut many times. Yeah. Well, it's, it comes with the territory. It's like yeah. <laughs> it happens, you know, artists. Sometimes you're painting, you get paint on you. Right. Like, <laughs> hard foil get cut. It's like it's crazy. It's fine. I'm alive. <laughs> You're alive, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Let me, what I'm gonna do is um 
I want to share your Instagram and everything one more time before we sign off, just so everybody can um, follow Dean on Instagram. You can see what he's working on. You can follow Summertime Gallery and see what they're up to. Um, and yeah, look, I look forward to seeing you again in April and hopefully um, some of our friends tonight will join us because um, this has been really amazing to chat with you and see you working and we're just super inspired by your sculptures um, and just you yourself, Dean, you're amazing. And yeah, we can't wait to have thank you here. So much. Yeah, everyone in the chat is saying thank you for talking to us, Dean, and thank you for upcycling. Um, that's really, that is a really important part of your work is reusing your foil too, because, you know, we really need to work on that in general. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, I, I I feel that. Yeah. All right, everyone. Well, thanks for tuning in. We did record our talk tonight, so we will have that on our YouTube if you need to watch it again or share it. Um, so thank you, everyone. And thank you, Dean and Summertime Gallery. And thanks, Anna. I know you're in the background. Um. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you to everyone that's able to tune in, and I appreciate you guys. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Um, have a good night, and keep an eye on our AVAM, avam.org um, for more fun things, virtual and in person. So thanks, everyone. Have a good night. Have a good night, y'all. Bye. Bye.